Oh, good night, nurse. When you're talking about making repros, you're talking about what kind of programmer should you use? Should you use a Top 3000 or the GQ4X? What EPROMs should you use? You're talking about the M27C512s or the 1001s or the like AM27C020 uh, and stuff like that. Then you're talking about soldering guns, desoldering guns, what type of solder to use, what type of wire to use, and a whole lot more than that, man. What if I told you there is a way you can make Nintendo repros where you don't have to use any of that? No soldering, no desoldering, no rewiring. Don't have to use any of it. I'm going to show you how in this video. Stick around. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you're subscribed. I have tutorials on how you can make repros the old-fashioned way and the new-fashioned way. Is new fashion? Sure, why not? Uh, also have tutorials on how you can hack your own NES game so you can put, for instance, yourself in your favorite Nintendo game just for fun. Uh, I have those uh, playlists uh, available for you as well, absolutely free, as a thank you for watching my channel. But if you dig what you're seeing, make sure you're subscribed. And while you're at it, you may as well hit that notification bell, because, hey, there I have more new videos coming out all the time. Don't want to miss out. Now, although I'm still using the parts I have left over from when I was making repros the old-fashioned way, where I'm talking about cannibalizing old games to turn them into new games, I still have the parts that are still cannibalized, but I'm not cannibalizing any more Nintendo games for the rest of my life. I'm done. There is a special place in the Minus Worlds for how many games I've destroyed. Not as many as some others. However, enough for me to go, enough is enough. There are better ways to make repros, no doubt indeed. And on this channel, I have talked about Muramasa quite a bit. Not the only game out there, but, you know, he makes these boards, so you don't have to use old uh, parts. But when you get a Muramasa board, and it does come with, like, this one, for instance, is the TX-ROM. It can be, like, for TS-ROM, TL-ROM. This is the MMC-3, but then you still need to use the CIC, a couple of EPROMs, uh, the capacitor. There's also resistors. This is not complete yet. I still have to do a few more things, you know, before before this game will actually work in a system. Actually, this will probably work in a top loader, but I want to put in the other stuff just in case. That's the problem, though. You have to put it all in there just in case. And even though I've already soldered all these pins and stuff like that, too, there's still more to do with this board. I'm not technically savvy. I'm not technically inclined. I know how to use these because I've used them before. However, when you first look at this, you're like, I don't know what goes where. I'm not sure what's going on with who and the what. Ugh, isn't there an easier way? I'm here to tell you. There is, and that's what I want to show you in this video. Now, this is one of these, only it's this, and everything's already in place. It already comes like this. This is the TL ROM board from Infinite NES Lives, or is it Infinite NES Lives? I think it's like Infinite Lives, but then like there's NES in the middle, if that makes sense. You know what, for the rest of this video, I'll just call them INL. How about that? I also want to say up front, full disclosure, this is not an endorsement for INL. I paid for all these parts myself. I paid for the programmer. I paid for the everything. They don't even know I'm doing this video until I post the video and I'll share it with them saying, hey, guess what? I did a video about you. I'm just showing you because I used them before in the past and I think they're very, very handy. So basically with this board, it already comes pre-equipped with all the little chips and everything you need. All you need is a programmer to pop this in, say what game you want to make, and then it puts it on here and then you're done. And it really is that simple, but I'll show you how I do it too. Now you already heard me say the magic word. You need to pop it into a programmer. And that's where they also come in. They sell the programmer itself. And it is this hefty sucker. God. Oh, hold on. No, I'm just kidding. It's this little guy right here. Now, I opted for the three-peat on this one. This is for NES. This is for Famicom. And then this one is for Super Nintendo. They also do sell flashboards. This is a flashboard because you're flashing the game onto this. You can use it for Nintendo and Super Nintendo. And they do sell boards for both Nintendo and Super Nintendo. And I have Famicom on there, too, because, A, it was like $5 extra, right? And, B, using this, from what I understand, you can dump your own game's onto, say, your computer, too. There's a little toggle switch over here. Now, it doesn't work for Super Nintendo, but if you have a Famicom game or a Nintendo game that you're like, oh, I have a prototype game, I want to dump it onto a computer and uh, you know, preserve it for life, this is uh, what you would use for that. I've never actually done that before, so if I figure it out, I'll do that in another video. And if you know how to do it, please reach out to me. I mean, I haven't done it yet, but I do plan on working it out. Now, I have my programmers for EPROMs, and those run you 
a hundred plus for a decent one anyway. The top three thousand that I use personally, that I have used for the last long time, I think I paid about one twenty, one thirty, something like that. Now, a couple things up front. If you're wondering, this is the same device that they're using for the NES Maker to put your NES Maker ROM onto a physical cartridge. It's the same one of these. So on top of that, unfortunately, this is sold out through the website, but it will be back in stock. So I still wanna show this off to you to see how it works. And I'll be honest with you, I don't remember how much I paid for it, but I think it was something like 30 or 40 bucks. Seriously, that's all it was. The kicker are these flash boards, and I wanna tell you up front too, each individual board comes at kind of a premium. In fact, this one here, this is the TL ROM board. And it's just shy of 20 bucks each. You can save more if you buy in bulk. And when you think about it, you're not wasting money on solder, desoldering. You don't even need a soldering gun or a desoldering gun. In fact, if all you want to do is just make some games for yourself and your friends, 20 bucks each, you put it into a cart, and they also do sell the shells through their website if that's convenient for you. You're golden. You're good. And let's be honest, in today's society, I got three kids, I got a full-time job, time is money, and if I can pump out a few of these quickly before a convention so I can, uh, you know, bring at least a couple of games to bring to a convention or something like that, I, <laughs> I'll at least tell you as much. If you do a few of them, it pays for itself, right? Just don't be selling, like, bootlegs of games that actually exist in America. Come on now. But these are very, very handy if you're programming your own homebrews. Certainly something like this will work. Let me show you how it works. So it is, quite simply, you take this, you put it in place and then you tell it what game it is. Now you still have to split the game up into the two sections that you do when you make repros, but again, you can do that easily. A program that does that for you is very easy to find. And I do have definitely, I definitely have videos on how you can do that. So let's go ahead and check it out. Now the first thing I wanna show you is before you erase it, you can put it in your system. I'm gonna use a top loader through an RF just to show you. And when you do play it, it at least shows you that. So, there's something on here, you have to erase it before you can write onto it, and that's, uh, I'll show you how you can do that right now. Now, very, very important, make sure you're putting it in the right way. If you put it in backwards, and I'm not even gonna attempt to do it right now, this thing heats up super, super hot. Um, I did it once accidentally, uh, kind of torched my finger a little bit, didn't make any permanent damage, but uh, the board was certainly fried, so I was out 20 bucks just for doing that. So don't do what I did. Uh, make sure you're putting it in properly. It's in there properly. Now, when you get the program, you'll have to install a couple of files so it will work properly, and that's no problem. I'm actually doing this right now on a Windows 7 netbook that I still have and I still use today. There is ways that you can plug it into like a Windows 10 computer and stuff like that, and I don't do that. I just, I already have the Windows 7 computer ready to go. Um, if you can't get it to work on your Windows 10 or something like that, um, I would recommend even just going to a pawn shop or finding a cheap, you know, Windows 7 laptop. Because again, this is this has worked for me this whole time, and I have no problem uh, with it. However, um, I can certainly understand if you don't want to do that. This is the Kazoo program here, and I'm going to show you how to do NES games. Um, su uh, Super Nintendo games are done very similarly, but I'll just do it this way. There is the README, of course. You want to check out the README before you do this. And this is the N, uh, INL Retro Progue. This is the 1.1 Beta. There might be even a newer one by now. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't even looked. Because this one still works. <laughs> Paul, if there's a new one, let me know, will ya? I don't mind if you see what else is on this little desktop over here. I don't care. So the first thing you have is you drop down. Now you can pop in, like say you already have your game separated to find out what you're going to use. And even you have the Super Nintendo games down here too, whether you're using like a one meg Super Nintendo board, a four meg Super Nintendo, all the way up to like the 12 meg. This is like your Star Ocean and all that. Um, and you can actually get these through their site too if you wanna make your own Star Ocean. I've done it before several times and it always worked out perfectly each and every time. But the boards I bought for today's exercise is the TL ROM, the 256-256. Um, so I'm going to load up my already segmented 256 PRG. But again, before I do that, I have to do the header and I have to load and I have to erase both the PRG and the CHR. Remember when I popped it in there and there was that little opening screen? You gotta erase it first. So go ahead and erase it. I'm going to hit open. It's in there. Everything's plugged in. It's good to go. Windows 7 takes a little bit to go in here. I can test it. Sure, I can test it out. Let's see what it says. Well, the test okay, so it recognizes there's something in there. And I'm going to write, basically, the erase verified OK. It takes that long. It's already erased. So now let's put in our segments here. So I'm using the 256 PRG. 
And here it is right here, the RGT85 PRG. This is the 256, as you can see right here, 256. So I'll hit open. All right, so it looks good. 256, PRG, etc., etc. I can test it if I want. It's still in there. Hit right. And then you'll see that green progress bar. That means something's working. The cool thing is, if it does fail on you, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, every once in a while there is a failure in it, I just erase it and do it again. Now, if it fails on me a few times along the way, then maybe I do have something that I'm not doing right on my side. Almost always it's operator error, you know. <laughs> so when in doubt, you can just erase it and write it on there again. Now this is just the PRG side, so we still need the CHR after this is done. And I want to make sure I grab the CHR of the game I'm actually writing on. In this case, it's going to be the RGT85 game. And here we go. Verified OK. Easy enough. All right, let's go to the CHR now. RGT85, CHR, and again, 256. Sure. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm just, I'm always in the habit of testing it just in case. If the testing gives you an error, you can always try uh, hitting the reset button or just unplugging it, plugging it back in. The reset button, it prevents you from having to do that, but I'll just hit right. And then we wait around for a little while. The reason I will tell you in the meantime I am making the RGT85 game hack is because I am not going to be at too many games this year. However, RGT85 is so if you want to meet sean long i'm actually making these for him and if you want your own rgt85 game hack uh he will have them available at his booth so make sure you swing on by and grab one i wish i could join you this year for the too many games expo it looks like an awesome awesome expo in fact my wife and i agreed last year if i sent her to kcon i could go to too many games unfortunately kcon is on the same weekend as the game on expo which i already accepted Maybe next year. We'll see. All right. They're both in there. Let's test it out. So when you pop it in, you can power it up. There you go. And if you want your copy, you can join RGT to five of the Too Many Games Expo. I believe it's the weekend of June 22nd or something like that. Sometime in June. It's like third weekend in June or something like that. Should be a fun time. And this is, this is where you'll uh, be able to find this from. All right. Really quickly, if you need a refresher on how to split a ROM, use this program called Famarom. I found this on the Nintendo Age forums. They probably have it on other sites, too. But super, super handy and convenient. You can load the ROM. You can also just drag and drop. Say you want to make a Mr. Gimmick ROM, well, or Mr. Gimmick on a flash board, like from INL. They do sell the boards that make these. Now, on the, the boards, it tells you it's the FME7 Sun Soft Board. Uh, just look on the site, and you'll find the one that's looking for it. So this tells you a couple of different sizes here. Like, this is, uh, you know, this the PRG is... The two zero and then the CHR is the one zero, or here's the uh, you know the kilobytes. That's the two fifty six, the one twenty eight. Um, it's easier for me to split so they're both the same size. So I would do this is what I would do anyway. Um, I would do the I'd do both the same size. It makes it nice and easy, and then I would hit the split button. That's really about it. That's how easy it is. So no soldering, no desoldering. Uh, know what EPROMs to use on what things and all that. No, like, oh, I had to put this all together, but I still need, like, the CIC chip and all that. It's all on here. And this is actually a different one. This is uh, the TK ROM with the battery. This is going to be something you can use for games like Mother, which is Earthbound before Earthbound. It's the Earthbound for the NES kind of thing. Um, there's a lot of games you can make with something like this. So, Something to consider anyway when you're thinking about it. Now again, they come in a premium. Once you have the programmer, these flash boards can get kind of pricey. Like this one runs about 20 bucks or so. Some of the Super Nintendo boards run like, you know, upwards of near 25, but then some of the lesser, smaller games, like the in-ROM games and stuff like that, well, those are gonna run you a lot cheaper. Now you just have to find your balance along the way too, and they will give you a discount if you buy in bulk. So anyway, I'm a huge fan of them. I use these too. I like having these on hand, especially if something comes up where you know, I just have to have, you know, something to send out to someone or that someone's like, oh man, can you make me one of these before the convention? I'm like running out of time and I can't find my soldering iron. Or, you know, I, I'm all out of solder and I didn't realize it or something like that. It's easy just to throw it on one of these kind of boards. Yeah, they're pretty neat. So infinitenesLives.com. You can check out a link in the description below. You can see all the information. You can see what else is on there too. In fact, that website also sells uh, homebrews through that site that are made using uh, all of their parts. And they'll also just sell you the parts so you can make your own homebrews at home if you'd like. It's just convenient and I love the fact that there is another option as opposed to doing all the things like especially if, like, you're, afraid, if you're afraid of soldering or something like that. 
uh, something like this will come in handy for something like that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if there's any other options for making new games on new parts, please let me know in the comments. I know there are several other websites out there, uh, many of the websites I haven't used before in the past, but, you know, maybe I can look into them and you know, we can do some more videos about it. But what do you think? Should I do a video on how to do Super Nintendo games? I mean, it's basically the same, uh, but happy to help out if you'd like. I've got some more games I gotta make, but while I was making that one, I wanted to show you, since I already had everything set up, on how I do it, and, you know, maybe inspire you to do it yourself. Till the next video, take care, thank you for watching, see ya.